If you believe you have any information pertaining to this case, you may contact Crime Stoppers on 0800 555 111 or online at crimestoppers-uk.org. On the 18th of April 1943, a group of four local boys were poaching or egg collecting near Witchbury Hill in the Hagley Wood on the Hagley Estate in Worcestershire, England, when they happened upon a large witch elm. Thinking the tree would be a good place to find birds' nests, one of the boys began to climb it. As he was climbing, he glanced down into the hollow trunk and caught sight of a skull. Initially, he believed it was an animal's, but when he took a closer look, he noticed human hair and teeth. Promptly, he returned the skull to the tree trunk. As the boys were trespassing on the land where they found the skull, they agreed to keep quiet about their discovery. Upon returning home, however, the youngest of the group felt uneasy and ended up reporting the finding to his parents, who contacted the authorities. The next day, the police and a lumberjack retrieved from the tree a near-complete skeleton, along with several fragments of clothing and a pair of shoes. The way the body was positioned led the authorities to surmise that the decedents had entered the tree trunk feet first. Some distance from the tree, the remains of a right hand, separate from the rest of the body, were found. The remains were sent to Professor James Webster for forensic examination. Professor Webster concluded that they were those of a woman who had died at least 18 months prior to discovery, placing her time of death in or before October of 1941. There were no signs of serious disease or marks of violent trauma apparent on her bones, though a piece of taffeta was discovered jammed down the woman's throat, which led the professor to believe that she had been murdered by asphyxiation. He also deduced, given the measurements of the tree trunk in which the victim was found, that she must have been placed into the trunk before rigor mortis set in, which suggested that she wasn't killed far from where she was found. The victim was most likely of Caucasian descent. Though very early reports put her at 18 to 25 years old, she was later determined to be between 25 and 40 years old, most likely about 35. She stood about five feet tall and had naturally light brown or mousy coloured hair, a slim build, one missing tooth at the bottom right of her mouth, which was thought to have been professionally removed by a dentist about a year prior to her death, and front incisors that overlapped. Professor Webster was of the opinion that she may have given birth to at least one child in the past, but the evidence to suggest so was inconclusive. She was found wearing a dark blue and mustard coloured striped knitted woolen cardigan, a light blue belt, a mock wedding ring made from rolled gold, a brown or mustard coloured cloth zip-up skirt, a peach coloured taffeta underskirt, and a pair of blue crepe-soled shoes, size five and a half. It is believed that the taffeta found inside her mouth was torn from her underskirt. Due to this, it's thought that the killer may have had a sexual motive. The woman was likely a working class individual given that her clothes were of poor quality and the ring she wore was quite cheap. Police in 1943 were fairly certain that the woman wasn't a local. They also believed that her body had likely been brought to the woods by car. It should be noted that it was rare to see cars on the road during wartime Britain due to the petrol shortage. After the body was found, it surfaced that members of the Home Guard patrolling Hagley Wood saw something potentially suspicious one night in 1941. Allegedly, there was a car parked nearby. When the members of the Home Guard approached this car, they found two people inside, a man in the driver's seat and another person in the back seat. The person in the back seemed to be concealed within a large coat and looked very still. The Home Guard asked for the driver's ID, which showed that he was a member of the Royal Air Force. They did not ask for the individual in the back's ID, as they thought that they may have been undressed, which is why they were concealing themselves in a large coat. I am unsure whether the police followed up on this potential lead or not. An article published by the BBC in 1999 states that an anonymous letter was sent to a local newspaper in 1943. The author of the letter claimed that they knew the unidentified woman belonged to Aspiring, and her job was to provide information to the Luftwaffe about local munitions and factories. I have been unable to find out anything else about this letter. In 1944, the year after the woman's remains were found, graffiti reading, Who Put Bella Down the Witch Elm, Hagley Wood, was found scrawled on a wall in Upper Dean Street in Birmingham. This graffiti brought rise to a seemingly promising tip. 
A prostitute who worked in the Birmingham area approached the police to state that a fellow prostitute by the name of Bella, who frequently worked on Hagley Road, had gone missing about three years prior. The location and the time frame do add up. Hagley Road is, as you can probably tell from the name, not at all far from where the unidentified woman's body was found, and the woman was thought to have been deceased since at least 1941. Unfortunately, as far as I can tell, nothing came from this lead, however promising it may have seemed. Ever since the original graffiti appeared in 1944, variations of that same statement, who put Bella down the witch elm, have been cited all throughout the United Kingdom. Variations include who put Lou Bella down the witch elm and who put Clara Bella down the witch elm. Police at the time of the original incident theorised that perhaps the graffiti artist knew of the deceased woman's identity. Though, of course, it's entirely possible that the artist didn't know the victim and simply chose the name Bella arbitrarily. Police scoured missing persons records for women named Bella, or something similar, like Isabella, or Arabella, or Belladonna, but this amounted to nothing. In 1945, Margaret Murray, an anthropologist and archaeologist from University College London, brought forth the theory that perhaps the woman was killed by gypsies during an occult ritual. The only evidence to really support this theory is the fact that there stood a gypsy camp in Hagleywood around 1940 or 1941, and one of the woman's hands was found separate from the rest of her body, which is consistent with a ritual named the Hand of Glory. It seems more likely to me, at least, that the hand was severed by the animals who ravaged the body after death, who then moved it some distance away. In 1953, a woman came forward and claimed that her late husband had confessed to a family member and to her that he and a Dutchman had placed the unidentified woman in the witch elm. The story goes as follows. The husband, the Dutchman and the woman, who was supposedly also Dutch and had illegally immigrated to the UK earlier in 1941, went drinking in the Little Tanams pub in Hagley. The woman apparently got incredibly drunk and lost consciousness in the car on the way home. The two men allegedly decided to place her, still alive, into the tree trunk in the hope that when she woke she would recognise the error of her ways. The husband was then admitted to a psychiatric hospital because he had recurring night terrors, in which a woman would stare at him from inside a tree. He died in that hospital in 1942. The validity of the wife's story has been questioned by the police, as she did not make this public until over a decade had passed since her husband's death. The part about her husband being hospitalised and dying in that hospital in 1942 is known to be fact, however. Also of note, before his hospitalisation, the husband reportedly purchased an RAF uniform, which he was seen walking around in, despite not actually being in the RAF. If you recall, members of the Home Guard recalled seeing a potentially suspicious man with an RAF ID in a car in Hagley Wood in 1941. It is unknown what became of the Dutchman. As far as I can tell, only his surname, Van Ralt, is known. Also in 1953, another theory came to light. It was thought that the decedent may have been a Dutch woman by the name of Clarabella Dronkers. Dronkers was allegedly killed by a German spiring for, quote, knowing too much. Historical records have been unable to support or prove this theory. The unidentified woman's remains were sent to Birmingham University for unofficial testing in 1943. With time, they were lost. The current location of the remains and the autopsy report is unknown. As such, DNA analysis is not an option in this case, unless the remains are located in the future. Thank you to David for suggesting that I cover this case. Quite frankly, I doubt an identification can be made unless her remains are located and DNA is extracted. Still, I hope that with this video I can keep her memory alive and or possibly gain the attention of someone who could bring to light a new lead. The West Mercia Police officially closed the investigation into this case in 2009 and donated the files to the Worcestershire County Archives. However, this does not mean that hope is lost. Again, if you believe you have any information that made in the identification of this decedent and or her murderer, you are urged to contact Crime Stoppers on 0800 555 one or online at crimestoppers-uk.org. Thank you very much for giving Bella's case a moment of your day.